Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be producing some phosphorus pentoxide by reacting white phosphorus with some oxygen. Now, phosphorus pentoxide is a very strong dehydrating agent, and we're going to be needing it in an upcoming reaction to produce some precursors to eventually make some acetic anhydride. Now, as I said, we're going to be reacting this white phosphorus with oxygen, and we made the white phosphorus in a previous video, and we must have no water in our system or else the phosphorus pentoxide will react with the water to form phosphoric acid, which would be bad. So I already have an oxygen generation apparatus set up here, and so I'll go ahead and walk you through it. So, as you can see here, in the bottom we have a 1 liter Erlenmeyer flask. Now, this is full of manganese dioxide, and this is just you being used to decompose hydrogen peroxide directly to oxygen gas. Above this we have a 250 milliliter pressure equalizing addition funnel where I have some 30 percent hydrogen peroxide which is slowly dripping into the flask below. Now this was purchased at a health food store, however you could find lower concentrations at places such as pharmacies or grocery stores, but you'll just need a whole lot more of it. The 30 percent really does help. The oxygen gas being generated below travels up the sidearm here and then continues on upwards to this condenser. Now, I install the condenser just because the decomposition reaction is somewhat exothermic and water vapor is mixed in with the oxygen gas, we just want to condense as much of that out as possible. Above this, I have set up a Claisen adapter, as you can see, and this is just to help keep the system so that there's not too much pressure which builds up. If there's too much pressure, the balloon will expand and our glassware won't explode or anything. I then do have a, a vacuum takeoff adapter with a stock cop, but stop cock above and a hose which comes off to a drying tube. I ran out of some glass for pieces so I kind of used some stoppers and some vacuum tape takeoff adapters and, and distillation pieces to put this drying tube together but it has calcium chloride inside which is anhydrous and you can see that the gas then goes out the other end of the tube and goes up to a bottle which I chopped the bottom off of. I then have a four foot balloon on top which you can get from places such as the dollar store or whatever and this will slowly fill up and here's where we're going to be keeping our nice dry oxygen gas. So I'm going to let this run for a while and we will probably need to replace the hydrogen peroxide in the pressure equalizing addition funnel. We will be adding about 500 milliliters in total. So I'll let this to continue to grow and see how big this balloon ends up getting. So while we're generating the gas outside, I'll explain the apparatus that we're going to be using to do the reaction in. So you can see here that I have this large pickle jar here, and I've fit it together so that we'll be able to burn the phosphorus in here, and then collect the phosphorus pentoxide produced afterwards. So, as you can see, we have a tube coming out of the top here, and we'll be attaching a balloon to the end of this tube, and the oxygen will be able to flow into the vessel and react with white phosphorus. Because we're using a phosphorus which is a solid and oxygen which is a gas to produce phosphorus pentoxide which is a solid, as the phosphorus reacts we should have a negative pressure on the inside and more oxygen should be able to come in. I have the reaction part itself suspended here as you can see and we're using steel wire to do this just because it won't melt hopefully under those really high temperatures. I have a copper dish with some sand at the bottom and then another steel dish on the inside and this should just help it so that the phosphorus can react without melting through to the bottom of the container itself. Hopefully the phosphorus pentoxide formed will then collect on the sides and everything and we'll be able to collect that afterwards. We will be pre-filling this jar here with oxygen gas to flush out any other nitrogen and everything, which is why I have the straw on the side, so that the oxygen will form in the bottom, as you can see, and displace all that air. I'll also be putting a piece of paper in, and we're going to be using this high power laser here, and burning the paper, which should initiate the reaction. This way we don't have to have a fuse or anything, and it will hopefully be safer when dealing with this white phosphorus. I also do have a jar here to the side, as you can see, and there's some sand in the bottom, and we're going to be placing this large jar inside of the other jar, and this way, if the glass of the smaller jar breaks, we should hopefully still be able to contain the white phosphorus within the glass jar, and we'll still hopefully be able to get some sort of phosphorus pentoxide product. So, I'll be taking this outside, setting it up, and we'll see if this works. So I have everything set up outside now, as you can see, and we have the balloon off to the side. It has about 50 liters of oxygen gas in it, and this should be more than enough to react with all of our white phosphorus. 
I just cracked the top of the lid, and we are now filling the chamber with oxygen gas to hopefully displace any air out of there so that this properly works. So once the whole container was back filled with oxygen, I took off the lid along with the reaction vessel and just put some saran wrap over top to keep the oxygen in. So at this point, the white phosphorus was taken out of the water using a pair of tweezers and dried off quickly and then placed into the reaction vessel. This was done as fast as possible so that the white phosphorus didn't begin reacting with the air. Once placed in the reaction vessel, there was the piece of paper inserted, of course, then everything was lowered into the atmosphere of pure oxygen and it was screwed on nice and tight. It was then placed into the larger jar and lowered down. So some saran wrap was placed over top to contain everything, and then the laser was used to initiate the reaction. So as the reaction progressed, it went along very steadily, generating the nice phosphorus pentoxide, and it had a fairly steady flame inside, despite it being so, so hot. And this was just because it really could only take up so much oxygen as it was flowing through the tube, and I did use a fairly narrow tube, which was good, and it seemed to all be working really, really well, until, well, the tube caught on fire. <laughs> oh. So this was definitely a bit of a surprise to me, and the whole thing was getting covered in black soot, but thankfully the inside vessel was totally safe. Now, despite not expecting this to happen, I simply pinched off the tube to the balloon, and the fire immediately extinguished, and I was able to blow everything else out, and it was totally fine. So after fully reacting, the jar was brought back onto the cement patio, and I'd covered everything up to make sure that no air hopefully got in, or water vapor for that matter, and I next went ahead and opened up the jar. So once the jar was removed, you can see the outside is covered in black soot, and the lid is welded on, so we're going to need to use something like a razor blade to cut around the edges to actually get that lid off. You could also smash the top, but then you'd have jagged edges which you're working with, which isn't as much fun. Now, despite the black soot on the outside, it still does appear white on the inside, so we likely still have some phosphorus pentoxide, which is nice and pure on the inside. So, I went ahead, opened the lid, however, you could see that as soon as the lid was open, the entire thing burst into flames again. It appeared that not all of the white phosphorus had reacted, and this is just likely because the tube caught on fire before all the oxygen could be used up, so I just put this in another jar, and covered it with some aluminum foil, and I'm just letting it react. Now, the aluminum foil is not preventing all the phosphorus oxide from leaving, and I do have a gas mask on because it's quite dangerous to breathe in these fumes, but hopefully we'll be able to get a bit more of our phosphorus pentoxide from the second part of the reaction. Regardless of what happens in the second part of the reaction, we definitely have some phosphorus pentoxide from our first reaction, and I'm going to go ahead and scrape that out now. I'm going to work as fast as possible to prevent phosphorus or phosphoric acid contamination as much as possible. So, after scraping everything out of those jars, you can see that we have some phosphorus pentoxide here. Now, we expect about 80 grams of phosphorus pentoxide, however, this is definitely not 80 grams, and we'll go ahead and weigh it. So, you can see that, upon weighing it, this actually weighs only about 15 grams, which is pretty poor yield, but that's partially because we just had so many different errors throughout our whole procedure there. And if the tubing didn't catch on fire, I'm sure that would have definitely helped a lot with their yield. Some improvements that I want to mention on this would be it having the inlet for the oxygen coming to the bottom of the jar so that the heat rising doesn't cause the tubing to catch fire. You could also use uh, metal tubing or something that wouldn't burn nearly as easily. Uh, you could probably also generate even more oxygen so you have a greater pressure of oxygen going into the vessel to help limit the chances of the tubing catching on fire because perhaps when the balloon shrank the decreased pressure caused the fire to be able to get up into the tube or something. I'm not totally sure. Now this 15 grams here definitely is not enough to produce enough acetic anhydride for the reaction that we're going to be doing in the future but it's enough to make some acetic anhydride and we'll be able to explore some other fun reactions in making acetic anhydride. So, the last thing that I want to quickly go over is the extreme dangers associated with white phosphorus and phosphorus pentoxide. White phosphorus is extremely toxic and can easily kill you, and it's 
so toxic that if you ingest some, then it's concentrated in your jawbone. Your jaw can actually glow, and you will suffer multiple organ failure and die unless you have your lower jaw removed, which is not pleasant at all. Phosphorus pentoxide, if you breathe that in, it can also react with the water in your lungs, forming phosphoric acid, which could cause burns and stuff, and that's also just not pleasant. On top of all of that, phosphorus burns an extremely high temperature, and it would be extremely painful to accidentally have some of that on your skin and have it totally burning you. So this is not something that anyone should try. This is strictly for educational purposes, and I just hope you guys enjoyed seeing white phosphorus burning, but I hope you guys never ever try this, because it's actually seriously dangerous. Anyhow, this is essentially how to make some phosphorus pentoxide, and you can look out for some future videos where we'll be using it as a dehydrating agent, and we'll see what we can get out of all of this. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you later. Okay, bye.